Howdy there folks and welcome into today's video. Hope you guys are doing great job there as always. In this video here today, we're gonna get to my new top five stocks I hold my largest investments. And we're gonna count it down from number five all the way down to number one. A lot of times you guys know I'm buying these stocks and I'm like, hey, I just put 50,000 in this stock. And sometimes it gets hard to track. Like what are my actual biggest investments? So I'm gonna tell you about those and we'll go into a little bit of detail on each of these stocks on why I'm so excited and why I think I'm gonna make uh, some pretty good money on these stocks over time, okay? Now these five stocks we're talking about here today, over 50% of my personal net worth is in these stocks, okay? I put my money where my mouth is, I always do that, and I think that's one of the reasons why this channel's been able to be successful over time, as I'm always willing to put money where my mouth is. If I'm gonna go out there and talk super positively about a stock and why I'm so excited about it, you better believe I'm gonna put in a lot of money into that stock, okay? And so I always, always put my money where my mouth is. Let me know if any of the stocks discussed in today's video that you actually own. I would love to hear from you guys in that comment section as always. Let me know if you own any of these. Maybe you own them all. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe. We'll see, okay? Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, don't forget to smash that like button. That helps out huge with the YouTube channel. I appreciate all you guys in a massive, massive way. And oh my goodness, guys. Oh, we're about to hit 700,000 subscribers on the channel. I think we're gonna probably hit it this month, actually, which is like a crazy, crazy number. So thanks for being here. And by the way, should I change my profile picture? I was having a discussion with somebody the other day, like, you need to change your profile picture. That thing hasn't been changed in years. Let me know, should I change that? Should I just keep it the way it is, okay? Hungry Bull, we just did a huge update on Hungry Bull app, which is an app where you can track your stocks, track your cryptos, look at news, read your daily newsletter, keep track of the markets in general, all those sorts of things. Listen to earnings calls right inside. We just did a huge update. We are actively spicing up the newsletter look a little bit. We also added Forex assets in there. We simplified the layout for watch list, and we also added more financial data every single week you should expect an update from hungry bull we're just gonna make that beast better and better and better in the future if you want to know everything that I possibly know about picking winning stocks running portfolios you want to download everything from my brain directly to your brain check out the pin comment down there that will be to fill out an application to join us in the private stock group in the private discord chat and learn everything that I possibly know in the stock market let's get in this guys the number five biggest stock market investment I have is is the planet, yes, uh, planet 13, okay? This is my fifth biggest investment in the stock market. If you didn't know, they play in the Jack Jackson space. If you don't know the Jack Jackson space, you don't follow the channel close enough, okay? And in the Jack Jackson space, they build these massive superstores, beautiful, beautiful stores, okay? Over a billion dollar market cap on this one. They also have many owned brands, and the company is successfully building out those brands in a bigger and bigger percentage of the company is starting to become their own brands, which is, in my opinion, even bigger than their superstore opportunity long term, okay? Massive, massive. Four analysts now covering the stock, which is impressive, okay? And hopefully over time, they get off the OTC, especially if federal legalization comes, and then they'll be able to get on the big boy exchanges, and we'll get even more analyst coverage and uh, more attention to the stock over time, outside of just like, the say, the retail investor community, okay? Look at this, companies already expect to be profitable this year. Here. This year, that's amazing for how young this business is to already potentially be profitable is amazing, okay? Next year, the company is expected to either double or triple up their profitability next year as well. Now, for me, in regards to this company, it's all about revenue growth uh, over the next few years. Like, profitability, in my opinion, this business model is gonna be crazy long-term. But for right now, for me, revenue growth. That's the whole story. Triple digit revenue growth expected this year, and then another 46% expected next year, 207 mil. And don't be surprised if all of a sudden that number raises and raises and raises, and all of a sudden it's like, oh, now we expect them to do 220. Oh, now we expect them to do 240, now 250, okay? Do not be surprised at all, because I've seen that with Planet 13 almost every year so far, they've been a public company, right? And this one had massive news come out just a few days ago. I didn't cover this on the channel, but Planet 13, Illinois wins Chicago license. So they're likely gonna build a huge superstore in Chicago, probably within the next six to 12 months, in my opinion. This is massive, okay? Now, in regards to this deal, it's interesting. Planet 13 Illinois LLC is owned 51% by Frank Cohen and then 49% by Planet 13. So it's a, it's a very, very interesting uh, kind of deal here. It almost feels like maybe Planet 13 kind of wants to basically go bet halfies on this, right? They own 49%. So maybe they could get the license easier by going this route. 
also. Maybe they have to just like do way less construction costs and kind of that upfront money, right? Which Planet has good upfront money. I think they have nine figures on their balance sheet right now. But at the same time, like to build out these superstores and, and make them these grand things that are huge and beautiful, you know, it might not it might not be a bad strategy at all to partner with other folks who would put up some money as well. Okay, so this is a very very interesting deal. I don't know if this is a strategy Plant 13 is going to want to do outside of Illinois. Maybe this is uh, strictly an Illinois decision, and it very much could be. But we'll see what happens with that, and uh, it's it's interesting needless to say. So yeah, expect likely at least one if not two new superstores coming next year in 2022 which will be huge okay now for me in regards to planet this is a super long-term hold i'm not interested in getting out of the stock you know i when i first started investing in stock it was a hundred something million dollar market cap i watched it go to 200 mil 300 mil 500 mil 800 mil a billion plus now i'm not selling the stock i'm not interested in selling the stock at the end of the day when it comes to me and the planet i think this company can be a 10 billion plus dollar market cap long term I think they have an opportunity to be that type of company, okay? I think they have the type of opportunity where this company can rake in, you know, anywhere from 250 mil to $500 million of net income per year, okay? It's gonna take the business a while to get to that type of scale, but at the end of the day, in my opinion, there's gonna be a lot of companies in this space that are gonna be 10 billion plus dollar market caps. The planet actually has a legit opportunity to reach that. It's not like some pie in the sky, like, oh, I can't. No, like, like add up the numbers for superstores alone own, then the own brands as those brands get bigger and bigger around the country, add on federal legalization that will likely be coming in the next few years and uh, an uplisting to a major exchange, things like that. Like it's definitely not like, oh, this is like some crazy idea or something like that. I can definitely see the planet being a 10 billion plus dollar market cap long term. Now, if you've never seen the stores, I just want to show you guys a few pictures of this. This is a Las Vegas location. Unbelievable. And they're actually going to be opening a consumption lounge as well at that property property likely within the next six months that's going to be extremely interesting to see how that does where you can actually consume the product because right now if you didn't know by the way this is another picture of the planet location in las vegas if you didn't know you can't actually you know although you can go buy the product at planet you can't actually legally use it at any of the resort properties in the strip it's so strange okay you're supposed to be on private property to actually consume the product so now folks will actually be able to consume the product legally at the planet as well so that's just opens up this other huge long-term opportunity and more revenue driver for planet long-term overall here's another picture of the facility and this is a brand new orange county facility that opened and they're going to expand that over time as well and that is just i mean look at that place it's absolutely beautiful and we have boots on the grounds there okay we have boots on the grounds that track how many cars are going in and out of that place how many cars are, are parking at the place things like that and from my understanding the business is building almost every single week the place gets a little busier than the, the previous week and so for me that is good news the customer patterns will likely be different at the orange county store than the las vegas store obviously it's going to be more of a localized market versus the las vegas store which is like crazy at nighttime because everybody's on the strip and a bunch of tourists and stuff like that so the boots on the ground say things are building there happy to hear that okay then you have bob and larry leading this company which it, you got a you got a phenomenal they got actually a pretty deep team for being a billion dollar market cap or so this company actually has a really deep team I'm finding but Bob and Larry awesome awesome like you know I can't think of two guys I'd rather have lead a business like this than these two gentlemen they are just uh yeah they're pretty dang good okay that's all I'll say about that can't wait until the next corner's earnings conference call I am like looking so forward to that because we're going to hear a lot about the Planet 13 Orange County store how to think about that in terms of the short term and the long term impact of the Orange County store also we're going to likely hear about the owned brands in California and how does Planet 13's own brands expand into California over time obviously California itself is a crazy large opportunity so I can't wait for that and then we're going to get some more details around the Chicago location any details around that as well as maybe a future location uh, in 2022 as well so I'm I'm like this is a you know if we're thinking about like the, the next conference call that I'm looking the most forward to outside of maybe the chef it is the planet okay there's gonna be so much there okay what do you guys the fourth biggest investment I have up here is 
Tesla, my Tesla, yes, oh, Tesla. There you are, $714 a share here today. Mark cap of uh, about $692 billion, roughly for Tesla, my Tesla. Now, this should be my number one biggest, largest investment, but I went two week sauce when I was buying this a couple years ago. Just went two week sauce, but it is what it is. Can't rewind time, okay? Look at the numbers here, okay? First off, remember, this company was losing money hand over fist a couple years ago, right? The short sellers said, this company's gonna go bankrupt, they're going to zero, it's, they're donezo, okay? That's what we heard all the time a couple years ago. It was drama, drama, drama. Look at how profitable this business model. Already this year, expected to do 448. Keep in mind, it could potentially beat that. If you look at the, the past beat, it was insane, right? Next year, expect to do 618, which would be very nice growth. Don't be surprised if they, they beat that number huge as well next year. Okay, keep in mind, they're gonna likely sell some, some you know, high-end cyber trucks next year, which could end up being very, very profitable. Obviously, as you, you ramp, that kind of hurts profitability, but then you're talking about, you, usually what Tesla does, they sell the most expensive models first, which usually give you the best opportunity for profits, right? And then obviously the Model X and S refresh are, are hitting a little bit this year, but they'll hit even more next year. And then the company just continues to make progress in terms of bringing down cost of Model 3 and Model Y. So, you know, you, you kind of add up all these things. Don't be surprised if Tesla comes in with a huge beat on EPS next year. Now, in terms of revenue estimates for this company, expect to do just under $50 billion of revenue this year, which would be 50, almost 55% revenue growth for current year. Next year, expect to have another 34% revenue growth to do over $65 billion of revenue. This company continues to scale fast and fast and fast, okay? And, and keep in mind, scale starts working with Tesla more and more. More cars out there, I mean, more folks, I mean, keep in mind, guys, the high, high majority of Tesla owners are very, very happy with their vehicles, and they tell like everybody in sight about how happy they are about the Tesla, okay? And show off all its cool features and things like that. So as more and more Teslas get on the road, the, the word of mouth spreads more and more and more. And on top of that, they're in a manufacturing business, which essentially makes this company more and more profitable as they build bigger and bigger, okay? So all these things start looking very good, as well as a Germany Gigafactory. Look at that, okay? How good is that looking? Oh my gosh, okay? Yeah, it hasn't gone up as fast as a China Gigafactory, but you know, everything's gonna move a little faster in China. But the Germany Gigafactory is looking beautiful. That's gonna be huge for this company over the coming years. And then look at this. This is an Austin Gigafactory here. Look at this. I mean, you'll go back to October. It was basically just, you know, clearing land process. And here today, you look at that Gigafactory and look at that baby. That looks like it's, honestly, it looks like it's a few months away from being, um, you know, some production there. Let's just put it that way. A few months away from being looking uh, like pretty much done. So the, I'm thrilled, okay? The Germany Gigafactory, the Austin Gigafactory are gonna be huge for this company over future years. And keep in mind, guys, they're gonna keep building Gigafactories. There's gonna be more and more coming over time, but if I'm thinking over the next three or five years, I'm telling you the Austin Gigafactory and that Germany Gigafactory, massive for this company, all right? Now, in regards to me, I love Tesla for the long term. I'm a happy holder of this stock. In 2019, I talked about this stock all the time. I would do dedicated videos to it, sometimes several times a week. And then 2020, I started talking about it much less. And 2021, I hardly talk about Tesla. I might do one dedicated Tesla video a month. Sometimes I might even go over a month without making a Tesla dedicated video now, okay? So I'm hardly talking about it compared to a couple years ago, I talk about it all the time. And the thing is, for me, in regards to talking about stocks, I like talking about them a lot when there's like question marks like, oh, is this gonna go bankrupt? Is Tesla gonna be done? And I was like a, a happy buyer, right? Tesla nowadays is a beast. There's no like, oh, are they gonna go bankrupt? It's just about like, how big is this company gonna scale to? How big are they gonna get? What year are they hitting 100 billion plus in revenue? When are they gonna hit 10 billion plus in net income? These are the type of questions we're talking about now. So it's, it's like, it's cool and I don't mind talking about Tesla, but it's just, it's not like it was back in the day when there was so much debate about would they ever get to this position they're, they're in, right? And so I always talk about my bullish thesis on this company and basically, you know, kind of just told it how it is and how I thought it was gonna go and it's gone exactly that way, if not a little better, okay? So if you look at something like The Chef, right? The Chef, I'm talking about that stock all the time lately, right? And I hear people, it's like, oh, talk about another stock other than Tattoo Chef. Hey man, you know, it is what it is. That's all I'm gonna say about that. This is that year, this is like, you know, Tesla in 2019, 
And that's Tattoo Chef for me this year in 2021. I'm gonna talk about it all the time. I'll continue to talk about that stock. 2022, I'll start talking about it less. And by 2023, I'll probably hardly talk about it. You know why? Because then there'll just be an execution mode and then it won't be like a question of like, oh, are they gonna do this and do that, right? It's just gonna be execution, hitting the numbers, building the business into a bigger and bigger beast over time, right? And so it's just like, for me, that's not that exciting to talk about. It's like when the, when the company's just executing on a super high level and there's no more debate about it, it doesn't get as fun for me to talk about anymore, okay? Alrighty guys, let's talk about the number three biggest investment. Yeah, I love Tesla and I love this one too, okay? Corsair Gaming. So Corsair Gaming, $28 a share here today. Market cap of about two and a half billion, a little over two and a half billion dollars on this company. Huge in the gaming space, getting really, really large in the streaming space, all right? With stream decks, cameras, microphones, lighting, all those sorts of things. A company's absolutely a beast. They continue to acquire companies. Look at this. Hey, look at the metrics, right? We're talking about this company should do two billion, if not a little over two billion dollars of revenue this year. That would put the company at a forward price to sales ratio of 1.2, 1.3. This is for a business that's growing. They just grew revenues 24% in the last quarter, okay? 24% in a quarter where the world opened back up and no one was gonna buy gaming stuff and streaming stuff anymore, right? Yeah, I don't know about that, okay? Gross margins, the company should likely continue to increase gross margins in future years, all right? Now, forward P in the stock is like, you know, depending upon what numbers you have, is anywhere from a 15 to a 17 forward P. You know, a 15 to a 17 makes sense if you expect Corsair to never grow in the future. If you don't expect Corsair to have any revenue growth in future years, if you don't expect Corsair to ever grow their, their net income, a 15 to 17 makes sense. If you think this is gonna be a stagnant business for years and years to come in the future, fair play. But that's not the reality. Corsair Gaming should grow revenues between 5% and 20% per year, every year for years and years to go in the future. 5% would be a bad year for the company, 20% would be a great year. To be at a 15 to 17 Ford P just doesn't make sense at all for this stock, okay? It needs to, you know, this stock could easily get twice its valuation tomorrow, essentially. No, in their latest conference call, they talked about a lot, okay? I thought it was a great conference call, and if you haven't got a chance to listen to it, definitely listen to it. And by the way, if you got the Hungry Bull app, you can listen to it right inside the app. You don't even have to dig into all the information and try to find it on the investor relations page and all that stuff and enter in a bunch of info, okay? It's literally right inside the app, okay? They mentioned that transportation costs is not a great thing for the company right now. They talked about that several different kinds. The management team talked about that several different times on the earnings conference call, okay? So transportation costs is eating into the profitability of the business model in the short term. But keep in mind, that's a headwind now, and then it will move to a tailwind, okay? Anytime these companies talk about transportation costs and stuff like that, always short term in nature. Okay. The crazy rates at the shipping container companies and, and anybody in transportation right now, all those crazy rates, that's all gonna go down over the next year. And like I said, the business will go from headwinds hurting profitability to tailwinds helping profitability. And then all of a sudden 2022 rolls around and it's like, oh, now we got all these tailwinds helping us. Oh wow, this is great for the profitability of the business model. And then all of a sudden we're talking about tens of millions of dollars of extra net income on the bottom line, which makes the company even more profitable, okay? So in my opinion, it kind of sets up for a perfect storm, okay? It's just short-term stuff. Like the short-term traders and, and people like that can freak out over transportation costs. As a long-term investor, I don't care, okay? Those always go away over time, okay? Now, Corsair Gaming, it's not my biggest opportunity in the stock market, but it's still a huge, huge long-term opportunity. And the other thing I'll say about Corsair Gaming is this is probably one of my lowest risk stocks I'm buying right now, okay? I bought some shares at uh, $27 the other day, right? Maybe even 26 or, or 28, it doesn't matter. Anything, anything even remotely close to this price. Like, the chances I lose money in the stock over the next five years, I would say are less than 2% probability. Less than a 2% probability I lose money on the stock buying it, let's say here today at $28, versus I would say there's a 90% plus probability that I 2X or more my money on this stock over the next five years. These are the type of risk reward stocks I'm looking for in the stock market. When we're talking extremely low risk over the coming years and extremely high probability I make really good money in the stock over the coming years, that's my specialty. That's where I thrive, okay? I don't care if this stock doesn't move for the next three, six months. If the stock stays at $28 a share, 
I don't care. I'll gladly buy more and more shares. Short-term traders don't understand that mentality. Like, oh, I, I gotta have some action today, man. Gotta try. Me as a long-term investor, I'm like, I don't care. All I know is I'm taking extremely low risk in the stock and there's a extremely high probability I'm a 2X or more of my money over the next five years in the stock. That's what I care about in the end when it comes to stocks, okay? Low risk, high reward. Definitely, like I said, not my highest reward play, but definitely there's huge upside potential in that stock over the next five years, in my opinion, okay? Alrighty, guys, let's get in the second and biggest stock I hold of the bunch, and that is Walgreens Boots Alliance, ticker symbol WBA on this one. It's a $47 stock here today, a $40 billion market cap on this one, one of the biggest pharmacy chains in all of the world. Here's the thing, guys, okay? I'm gonna break it down real simple in regards to WBA here, okay? It's a needs-based business model, right? Prescriptions, uh, medication, all those sorts, of, like everything Walgreens basically sells, almost everything, like you go just walk a Walgreens store, okay? Almost everything is needs-based. I love a needs-based business model especially if I'm paying a super low 4P, which the, the, the 4P on, on Walgreens is like, I don't know, 10 or 11 or something like that. And I think when I was first buying in this, I think it was like an eight or a nine, okay? Super low 4P. The company's gonna have over $6 billion of cash infusion in coming into this company. And the reason being is they sold off their alliance side of the business, which didn't really make sense for them to keep that business. And instead, they're gonna be able to use that $6 billion to, to retrofit their stores, change uh, different things in their stores, and expand the business and really focus on their store store and online experience, which I think is brilliant, okay? So that $6 billion plus dollar cash infusion is coming very soon. You have Roz Brewer, who's come over to the company. She's about three to four months in for her job now, essentially, okay? Keep in mind, she came over there as a COO of Starbucks and helped them uh, just completely change their kind of digital footprint and uh, made, you know, basically uh, the company's very, very easy to just use your app now. And uh, most, most Starbucks customers, from my understanding, are now starting to actually use the app, the, the Starbucks app to buy things and I could definitely see that sort of experience with Walgreens making them so much more relevant as an app over time as well, okay? And, and keep in mind, this is also a lady who in the past has been on Amazon's board of directors. She's been the CEO of the Sam's Club division, which is under Walmart. So, I mean, you know, you couldn't really, I mean, I can't really think of somebody that would have been a better fit for this particular position and um, you know, building this business model, Walgreens back up over the next five, 10 years, I can't think of somebody better than her. And here's the last thing, she's in the prime of her career right now. Like, like you know, you look at her age, like that's exactly where you wanna be with somebody you know, coming into a company with a ton of experience, a ton of knowledge, a ton of connections to anybody who's anybody in the business space. It's brilliant, okay? She's like, my full faith is in Ross Brewer. Let's just put it that way. And then you have the shots, right? The Ronnie Rona shots are like a huge booster shot to the business model overall, right? It's made Walgreens ex exponentially more relevant basically just in the past six months than it was six months prior to that, right? Which is honestly a, a really good thing as well. And lastly, I get paid out five figures every three months from Walgreens to me because of the dividends, right? I own a lot of shares of this stock, it's my second biggest investment, and uh, they pay a lot of dividend money. So basically I get five figures paid out to me every three months just for holding the stock. Now keep in mind, I believe I'm gonna get nice capital appreciation on the stock, I'm already getting some, I'm gonna think I'm gonna get even more in the future, but that five figures every three months, I can just go and plug that into other stocks, or if Walgreens went down a bunch, I would buy a bunch more of that stock, okay? So I love that one, that's Walgreens broken down in the simplest way possible, okay? Let's get into the last one, the number one, the biggest investment of all investments. By the way, look at that. Oh man, they just put it together. I finally have a bed to sleep in. Look at that. After two months, it's finally happened. A bed is here. And let's hope this stock helps me buy some more beds in the future. And that is the chef, tattooed chef. It is my biggest investment, $21 stock here today. A little over a one and a half billion dollar market cap. I think a lot of you guys knew this was now my biggest investment in my portfolio. I'm not gonna spend a bunch of time talking about tattooed chef. If you want to hear about tattooed chef, Check out the video I just released 17 hours ago on the main channel here, okay? 14 minute video, it goes into essentially the earnings, what I think is about to happen with the stock price in regards to these earnings, if I think they're gonna miss numbers, make numbers, things like that, because literally we're just uh, you know a couple days away from the company actually reporting their next quarter's earnings, okay? And that's gonna talk about Tattoo Chef in that video, so enjoy that, okay? Hope you enjoyed today's video. As always, guys, I appreciate you being here so much, as always. And much love to you guys, as always, okay? If you look 
looking to download everything I possibly know about stock market investing, picking stocks, running portfolios, building up wealth, things like that. If you want to download all that to your brain from my brain, check out the pinned comment down there and apply for the private stock group and the private Discord chat. Thank you for watching and have a great day.